in this book, I will take you, the reader, with me into the secret inner world of the pimp. I will lay bare my life and thoughts as a pimp. The account of my brutality and cunning as a pimp will fill many of you with revulsion. I regret that it is impossible to recount to you all of my experiences as a pimp. Perhaps my remorse for my ghastly life will diminish to the degree that within this one book, I have been allowed to purge myself. If prostitution is known as the oldest profession, then pimping is the second oldest profession. Well, do you want to go to the room? Yeah, how much? Right now it's been taken out of context because mainstream has adapted and adopted that word and adopted the formula of pimping and thinking that they know what it is. But pimping is a player sending a bitch to the corner to get money. There's a fascination with any time you don't have to work for money. Whoever's doing the least amount for some cash, that is fascinating. It's like, what, what's he do? She does the work, he gets, well, I, I gotta, I gotta figure out how I get into this, you know. You had to know how to control and how to operate a stable, how to dazzle, befuddle, bewitch, entrance, and hypnotize a woman. Not only one woman, but eight, nine, and to keep them in harmonious effort. And if you think that isn't the job, my friend, you ask any married man. Iceberg Slim is the name that is synonymous with the pimp game. He's a writer uh, who lived an incredible life and wrote books that I grew up on. I loved him and I told him that every single time I talked to him because he was my god. Runs the ladies, has the rap, the clothes, the jewelry, the drugs, has done time, street cred by the truckload. Iceberg Slim was a guy who actually lived the life that he was writing about. Him might be my favorite book of all time. Yeah, I checked it out. The P.I.M.P. Pimp had a big impact on the game. It gives basic instructions of how to play the game. It was just amazing the thought of that. It was just fascinating. He would paint beautiful pictures using ugly paint, you know? You know, just bringing, like, looking around and just finding the beauty and the appreciation of wherever you are, be it in the ghetto or in a high-class neighborhood, and showing that it's okay to stumble, but it's not okay to fall, you know? Always get back up and you keep going. His books tell the truth about the life. There was no one more eloquent than Iceberg Slim, or no more poetic, or more accurate in terms of describing where he came from. I was in a bar and there was a fellow arguing with another fellow and this fellow drew a gun and fired at the fellow and the bullet went through my hat. I was full of cocaine at the time and I didn't react. So my friend said, man, you were so cool. He says, you were icy. And they called me Iceberg Slim. But she full of surprises, I swear this bitch is shady It's what I know Sex on my mind all the time And you think that that's your baby You don't know you was the guy that's living alive And she told them where you're safe It's what I know If you cool and she's satisfied How come that bitch just pays me You don't know When you're dealing with pimps And hoes They have to look the part So as a kid, you know some preacher walks in, it's like, yeah, whatever. Some pimp walks in, and you know, you can hear church miles piss on the carpet, it's so quiet. The first stages of my own street poisoning uh, happened when I was a boy, and my mother had a beauty shop. She catered to uh, a colony of uh, black hookers and pimps. And these fellows would be decked out in, in all their finery with all the diamonds and all the rest of it. And of course, they're women. A pimp was held in regard like an athlete or entertainer. He wasn't like an advocate of peace or violence. He was more or less like a hero. 
a pimp is judged by his flash. You know what I mean? His Cadillac, his house, his jewelry, his clothes. That's how you size up a pimp economy. Well groomed, smell good, you know, everything. Cause you trying to outmatch this female. You want that woman to look at you and say, this is the finest man I've ever seen. I mean, the immaculate dresser, I mean, hair cloth. Brand new Cadillac every year. When you were a kid, man, somebody had a brand new Cadillac every year. He was something. And that's the first time that I was impressed. Because you must remember, back in those days, if you were black, your opportunities were so narrow. Black person born during that time, what you were dealing with was almost beyond words. Those race riots in Chicago started because the black kid swam into an area that was whites only. Since the time when she was six months pregnant, my father had begun to show his true colors. After my birth, he got worse and had the stupid gall to suggest to mama that I be put on a Catholic church doorstep. Mama naturally refused, so he hurled me against the wall in disgust. I survived it, and he left us. Came from a single parent home. His mom, you know, by hook or by crook, she needed to put food on the table, you know, and to put food on the table, she had to be out and about in the world to do so. And it was just unfortunate, you know, that she, you know, entrusted a baby boy into the hands of the wrong person. In the opening of Pimp, the way that he describes his initial foray into the world of pimping is through being sexually abused by his babysitter, Maude. I remember more vividly the moist, odorous darkness and the bristle-like hairs tickling my face. And most vividly, I can remember my panic when in the wild moment of her climax, she would savagely jerk my head even tighter into the hairy maw. Right off the bat, he's subjected or dominated by a forceful woman who sexualizes him. He's uh, taught about the whole nature of uh, sexual dominance. And then later, he has negative experiences with his mother. She hooks up with a man named Henry Upshaw. Successful man, loved her to death, loved her and loved her son. It's the only man in Iceberg's life that he, he talks about, identifies with and talks about in not only a respectful way, but someone who really touched his heart and soul because he really cared about him as a human being. With Henry Upshaw, things were idyllic until his mother met a con man named Steve. He was one of Mary's customers in her beauty shop. He was a real slick hustler and he essentially hustled her and convinced her to leave with him to Chicago. His mother falls for the con on Henry Upshaw and fucks up everything. <laughs> fucks up everything, fucks up all the stability, fucks up like his like one shot. Really, it's the only shot he's got. What's so upsetting to Iceberg is not just that his mom has ripped, ripped him away from a mooring from a foundation that is found, but the way she does it. I can never forget that morning when Mama had finished packing our clothes and Henry lost his inner fight for his pride and dignity. He fell down on his knees and bawled like a scalded child pleading with Mama not to leave him. I will never forget her face as cold as an executioner's, which she was, as she kicked and struggled loose from him. Then with an awful grin on her face, she lied and said, Henry, honey, I just want to get away for a while. Darling, we'll be back. To see his mother betray the only man he ever loved, he learned that there's one thing I'm not going to be is those guys. I'm going to get her before she gets me because I know she's going to betray me. She then conspires with Steve to take off her ex-husband's loot. From that, he lost all respect for women. 